Today, we're going to take a walk through a botanical garden. Uh, maybe you're wondering, what is a botanical garden? Uh, maybe you're wondering uh, what the difference is between a botanical garden, an arboretum, and a greenhouse. These are words often used in the same theme when talking about locations with plants. Well, to begin with, a botanical garden is a location where plants are raised or grown. Um, they are maintained in this location and there's a large variety of plants. Um, so special location where plants are grown, maintained, and there's a variety of them. That would be a botanical garden. Now an arboretum is a type of botanical garden. An arboretum uh, meets the same standard, uh, but there are a large number of what are sometimes referred to as woody plants, woody plants. Woody plants are things like trees, bushes, shrubs. Um, so a botanical garden with lots of trees, bushes, shrubs, that's an arboretum. <clears throat> Now, where the line is drawn, where the distinction is made between botanical garden, arboretum, well, I'm no expert on plants and botanical gardens and arboretum, so that I can't answer. Um, there is some distinction uh, that those experts know between when it becomes a botanical garden and when it's an arboretum. But to me, they're very similar, so I'm not entirely sure. Um, but the last word is a greenhouse. Um, what is a greenhouse? A greenhouse is a structure usually uh, made of glass or at least largely, mostly made of glass where plants grow and this structure maintains heat and humidity uh, for the plants to grow. Um, in the United States, at least, I think in some other countries as well, um, frequently a greenhouse can also be made of large plas of, of uh, a large plastic. So instead of glass, a thick, large plastic um, is used to maintain the heat uh, and humidity. Okay, so those are the words um, that we will be using more in our video today because we are going to take a virtual stroll, a virtual walk uh, through a botanical garden in the city of San Diego, uh, California in the United States. Now, this location is officially referred to as a botanical garden, but what you will see in the video is that there were also many trees and bushes and shrubs, um, but it is not referred to as an arboretum. Um, but there is a greenhouse and we will be uh, showing some videos from within the greenhouse. So let's start our virtual tour. And to do that, I will begin sharing screens and we will start here. So let's begin with a short video and this is what we see when we first enter the botanical garden in San Diego. So you probably noticed immediately that there's lots of uh, trees and shrubs. Um, but again, it's not referred to as an arboretum. It still qualifies as a, a botanical garden. Well, let's take a look at our next uh, video. And uh, here we have a hummingbird. A little bird there is what we would generally refer to as just eating. 
He is getting uh, nectar from these uh, purple plants, plants. Now, one of the things I want to mention as we uh, go through our pictures and videos is that most uh, native English speakers uh, are not experts in the names of plants and flowers and trees. And so if you are talking to a, a native English speaker, it's, it's okay and good to know the specific names of the uh, different plants. However, just because you know the names, again, the, the native speaker might not, probably doesn't. So how do you describe um, the plant? Or how would you uh, explain what you saw to a native English speaker if you don't, uh, if they, if they don't know the name of the plant, and perhaps you don't as well? That's what we're going to do uh, in much detail today. Is as we look at some of these pictures uh, and videos, we're going to describe it using um, vocabulary and words in English, so that you can transmit the idea of what you saw regardless of whether you or the person listening knows the exact official name of the plant or tree. So um, this one, this little bird uh, is a hummingbird. Most uh, native English speakers know the name of this bird, hummingbird. But if uh, you forget the name of this bird, you might say it's a really small bird, maybe the size of your thumb, um, and this tiny bird has wings that flap super fast or has wings that, that uh, beat really fast. It has wings that move really fast. Uh, wings that flap, wings that beat, uh, wings that move really fast. Uh, and it's really tiny bird. And they will uh, likely know uh, very quickly that you're discussing uh, the hummingbird. Okay, and then, so then the hummingbird, he was uh, flying around um, what we might say are some tall, thin uh, flowers uh, with tiny purple leaves. So a tall, thin flower with lots of tiny purple leaves, and the hummingbird was flying around it. Now let's go ahead and read our sign here. It says, flowers for hummingbirds. Hummingbirds love long, tubular, red and orange flowers that produce lots of high energy nectar. With their long bills and tongues, hummingbirds can reach nectar that bees and other small pollinators can't. Surprisingly, hummingbirds often favor flowers that attract butterflies too. Um, so, this description here, long, tubular. So in the picture, you see these uh, flowers here. We would describe these flowers as long and tubular. Now let's go ahead and pause for just a moment. And we can, uh, let me see here and go ahead and stop sharing screens. All right, we're back. I wanted to pause there because perhaps you could hear in the distance, somebody was using a machine uh, that in English we refer to as a leaf blower, a leaf blower. And it's a large machine, often gas powered, uh, that blows leaves and dirt and uh, makes a lot of noise. Maybe they use this machine in the country where you're living. Um, but I didn't want that noise to interfere with our uh, virtual trip through a botanical garden. Okay, well, let's go ahead and return uh, to our, our virtual tour. So we were talking about the flowers for the hummingbirds. And uh, so now we are going to look at some of the flowers that uh, are at the botanical garden. And in this case, in this picture that you see here, of course, there's lots of little flowers here in the uh, forefront of this photo. But you can see in the background that this is in a greenhouse. But uh, up front, we have these pretty little flowers uh, to see. Now, these flowers were orchids. 
Um, in fact, here is the uh, sign World of Orchids. So in the greenhouse, um, it was full of orchids and a variety of uh, orchids as well. And again, in the background here, you can see some of the structure, but right uh, in between the metal bars is all glass because it's in a large greenhouse. All right. <clears throat> so now we're going to look at our sign, uh, an orchid timeline. And uh, some of the things here that we see, where did your orchid come from? Orchids are very common now, but that wasn't always the case. And um, just uh, we'll read a couple of paragraphs here. Uh, for example, we have the paragraph with the uh, title Orchid Care. In 1851, the Orchid Growers Manual was published, providing advice for cultivating orchids. Um, another uh, subtopic is protection. International trading of orchids removed from the wild is banned by the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, adopted in 1973. Um, <clears throat> this little sentence down here says, all is not lost. Every day, scientists and conservationists around the world learn more about orchids and how to save them. With focused efforts, we have the ability to protect orchids for future generations. So evidently, uh, from the sign and from some of the other things uh, that you can research, orchids um, need to be protected. Uh, they're in danger globally, evidently, which um, seems reasonable. The flowers are very uh, small. We might even use the word dainty, dainty to describe the flowers. Often things that are small, delicate, pretty, uh, we might... Uh, describe them as dainty. Um, so uh, it's a compliment if somebody describes you as dainty, perhaps they perceive you as um, pretty, um, like, uh, like these, these flowers. All right, well, let's move on here. Um, a close up of our uh, sign again. Uh, now we have some more uh, orchids. <clears throat> so I just want to take a moment to, uh, so how would we describe these orchids to somebody. Uh, maybe uh, the person is not with us, but we want to tell them about these beautiful orchids that we saw. We might describe them and say that, uh, well, they're small and dainty um, and they have thin leaves that are a kind of yellowish, yellowish green. So I would describe these leaves as yellowish green with spots of like a brown. So yellowish green in the, in the background with spots of yellow brown. You could also say that they have these leaves kind of have a leopard like print. So they're not a leopard print. A leopard print is different, but in English we can often use the word like to describe something that is similar. So this is similar to a leopard print. So we would say a leopard-like print. All right, beautiful flowers. I hope, I hope you're enjoying our, our trip. Some more pictures there of the same flowers. And we can see that they're next to some wide, big uh, leaves from another plant. I'm not sure what that plant is, but some wide, long, uh, leaves. Now here we would describe this, we would say uh, there was a, a, an arch made of branches, an arch made of branches, and then some white orchids, some white flowers were surrounding the wooden arch. And then, of course, we have some ferns over here. And then we can see our greenhouse there in the background. Okay, <clears throat> another sign, it says flowers and pollination. In order to produce fruit and seeds, plants need hummingbirds, bees, and butterflies 
to pollinate their flowers. In return, plants produce nectar as a reward. Without this partnership, much of our natural world wouldn't function as it does. Worldwide, the many species of bees are the most important pollinators. Honeybees are crucial throughout much of the world for their role in crop production. In the United States, they are responsible for pollinating a significant number of plants that we depend on for food every day. Tragically, honeybees are now rapidly disappearing from a variety of causes, including parasitic mites and diseases. Oh, this is a picture I couldn't resist. Um, I have a, a student, a little girl that loves unicorns. So, of course, we have the unicorn bench. Um, and uh, I'm sure she'll appreciate seeing uh, that the botanical garden made a unicorn bench. And maybe you like unicorns, too. I don't know. Okay. So now, <clears throat> uh, the next uh, video after this picture is of a treehouse. And uh, it's referred to as the Tonus Treehouse. This treehouse is built in a man-made tree molded after a tropical African strangler fig. Small African fig trees have been planted in the concrete branches along with many other tropical ferns, vines, and other plants. Strangler trees produce many roots that will grow over and later cover up the man-made tree. In tropical forests, small animals from insects to frogs and lizards live in these trees. Large trees produce lots of fruit for monkeys, birds, wild pigs, and deer. So this is a, a kind of uh, mix between a, a natural tree house as well as some portions that are man-made. So let's take a look at the man-made tree house. And as we look at it, I'll describe a few things here. So the first things that uh, we see so how might we describe uh, some of this? Well, <clears throat> this, uh, we have the entryway there, but now this here, we might describe that as a rope ladder. That's how most uh, native English speakers would describe it. We would say there was this rope ladder uh, that led into the tree house. And now we can even walk into uh, a portion of the tree house. So now we're entering it, at least the bottom portion where the trunk of the tree is. So the portion of the tree that goes into the ground is the trunk. There's the, now we're on the other side of the rope um, ladder. We see some real stairs um on in this side of the tree house part of the tree house where children can hide and play then we go down here and there's a small tunnel for children to crawl through or of course if the child is small enough they might even be able to just walk through it And then we can look up. We can see that there are people up on the top of the uh, top area of the tree house. So now we are at the top of the tree house where we were looking up a moment ago. Here we have a rope bridge that we can walk across. We can look out and see. There's a platform at the end of the rope bridge for us to stand on. And now we can look out and see the botanical garden from higher up. Our vantage point, our view of the botanical gardens is from above. All right. <clears throat> well, now we're going to look at a few more plants, some flowers. So again, we have some dainty, small flowers, little white leaves with purple leaves sticking out on top is how we would describe that. And uh, so 
sticking out on top are some purple leaves, some white leaves with a yellow portion is beneath them. Another picture of the same flowers. Now, I got this picture because uh, we would describe these as kind of like a reddish pink uh, flower. And we would say that the leaves look like paws. So the word paws, that's the word that we use for like the hands of um, cats or dogs or similar animals. So this portion of the flower, it almost looks like an animal's hand or paws. So we would say a pink reddish flower with leaves that look like animal paws. And here's more of the same type of flower. And as you can see there, it kind of looks like an animal's paw. Another video, here we have uh, some unique trees. If I remember correctly, these trees were found uh, originally in Africa, uh, but they have, we would say there's no branches on the base of the tree. Oops. But uh, so on the base of the tree, or bottom of the tree, there are no branches, but uh, up above, there are sharp, spiky branches or sharp, long, spiky leaves is how we would describe that. Now here, we have a large tree with leaves that, uh, hang down. So these are leaves that hang down and it almost looks like the tree is raining leaves. So we would say that it looks like the tree is raining leaves or the leaves look like they are a waterfall coming down off the tree. So the reason we say that is because the leaves have like a, a an appearance similar to water, whether water as rain or water in a waterfall, but really it's just leaves. The same tree. So here we have what we would describe as shrubs. We might describe this as shrubs. Shrubs are just uh, another word for uh, small thin plants in a, a group. A group of small thin plants can be a shrub. This is a cactus of some sort. And you could see, we might describe, we would say, so there's this large plant, green with long leaves. And then on the leaves, we might say, there are little spikes, much like a saw. So a saw is the device used to cut down trees. Um, and it has little metal teeth on it, the sharp portions that do the cutting. So we would say this leaf, has saw-like edges, saw-like edges. Um, I really like these plants. Um, we might describe them as this, we would describe this as a pale, a very pale green. Maybe even say uh, it's like an ice green with uh, tips, that are pinkish red. So a small plant with uh, lots of small leaves that are primarily ice green, pale green, with tips that are reddish pink. So these are the same plants we were looking at a moment ago, but now here we have some, some more plants that are very much like those, except we might say these had a combination of pale green, pale yellow, pale pink, or you could say like an ice pink, an ice yellow, an ice green. Those expressions mean really the same thing. And uh, the person listening will imagine this type of uh, green, pink, and yellow.
just a short video that shows the variety of these ice colored plants. And they come in different sizes. There's really small there. And then some of these bigger ones. Uh, you might say, if someone was to ask you, well, how big were they? You could say they're about the size of a head of lettuce. So uh, the size of what uh, a head of lettuce is, at least in the United States. <clears throat> oh, got a picture here. A small lizard. I don't know much about lizards. Um, but he seemed very relaxed, uh, although there were people walking around. He did not run away. He was very calm, uh, although surrounded by people. So this is a plant sculpture. So you can see that there is a sculpture here, but then on top of the sculpture, and the sculpture is actually made of shrub and tree branch. So shrub and tree branch, of course, the face, uh, is actually made of some type of pottery. Uh, but then the rest of her dress is all of those little plants that have the pale green, pale pink colors. So a plant sculpture is what we would call this. This is a pretty plant. We would say that it has flowers that look like hanging bells. So we would say a plant with leaves or flowers that look like hanging bells that are white, a pale white, maybe even a pale yellow is how we would describe that. Same plant with a wider view in this picture. Cactus, I really do like cactus. So what we have here is a round shaped cactus with lots of little needles. So the word here, that we would use to describe all of these things on the cactus is needles. Um, needle is the same word in English uh, that we use to describe when you go to the doctor and they um, uh, insert uh, a syringe uh, or insert uh, medicine directly into your skin or withdraw blood from uh, your body. Uh, the needle is uh, the word we use to describe that because as you can see, it's very similar to these things here, long, thin, and sharp. So this is the needles on a cactus, but that would be uh, the needle that a doctor uses to take blood or to uh, give you medication. Another cactus with yellow needles, and these two were very sharp. And we might describe these as small, round, low to the ground, very low to the ground cactus. A view from the top. Now this is our uh, <clears throat> final video, our final image. And this was a part of the uh, botanical garden primarily designed for kids. And uh, you can see that uh, there are lots of little toys and a train track. Um, I thought it was curious, the type of toys that they put here. So you might see that there's little men in a house and what would be a giant spider crawling towards them. Evidently dinosaurs are in this little town, a dinosaur using the little house right there. Dinosaurs had attacked this man waiting at the train station. <clears throat> Uh, there's some Disney characters here. Looks like Winnie the Pooh, Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse. Some water towers up here. More people in the little town. We might describe these as cars from the 50s. That's a general term. Those cars may not actually be from the year 1950, but... Um, Often uh, uh, in the U.S. English, we would just refer to those as cars from the, uh, the 50s. Okay, <clears throat> well, you have gone on a virtual tour of the botanical gardens in San Diego. I hope you learned some 
uh, valuable vocabulary that you can use when talking to other uh, English speakers about flowers and trees and plants. Um, I hope you like plants and flowers. I know that I, I like flowers uh, a lot, uh, so I enjoyed my time there. And if you're ever in San Diego, California, you might want to try visiting the botanical gardens. Uh, you might uh, like them as well. All right. Well, we will see everybody with more vocabulary in a, a future video.